Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, again, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Kadash. Again, double honors to the elders and apostles of great Muslim and taught us his truth. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopefully elect, the 144,000 men pushing this truth and diligence and sincerity across the four winds. All right, so this is part two. Going back into this book, Satan's Mark Exposed 666. The day the mark of the beast, the day of the mark 666 is almost here. Soon you will need it to cash a social security check, withdraw money from your bank, enter a hospital, buy food for your family. The mark will be laser burning to your right hand or your or forehead. Okay, so he he doesn't have an understanding that the mark of the beast is an RFI. He he knows that it's something. They're going to be in the hand like a laser etch, but he doesn't understand that it's going to be an RFID chip. But I just want to read something to you, though. It says, uh, the choice to bow or to starve. A tragic choice. Imagine you were living in the tribulation period. You had a choice to accept the mark and be able to buy food and life or reject the mark and face persecution and hunger. Slowly, watch it, slowly you watch as your baby cries in anguish from starvation. Perhaps you witness your husband torn away from you, held down by soldiers. He is injected with heroin day after day until he is totally relying on the drug. Then a walking auto, automation, automation, yeah, autom automaton, he is released back to you. How long could you stand it? Would you finally break and accept the mark or would you take it? Some more coaxing, or, or would it take some more coaxing, like watching your five-year-old slowly die by starvation? Would this be the breaking point? How strong would your would your faith be? That is just the beginning of what both the Jew, because he claims he thinks he's a Jew, and Christ-believing Gentile tribulation saints may face in the torturous last three years of the tribulation period, three and a half years of the tribulation period. You know, let's just keep reading though before I change the subject. When something like this is brought to our attention, we tend to disbelieve it. And as we brought out the truth and the things that are in the scriptures, that there's going to be starvation, famine, you know, destruction, sedition among men. People don't listen to us. They don't believe it. But now we are witnessing the beginning, the beginning of sorrows. Even the world famous Canadian, uh, hold on, when something like this, di like this is brought to our attention, we tend to disbelieve it, saying that it will never occur. Yet we fail to realize that such brutality is occurring even today. And this is in 1981. Even the world famous Canadian Royal Mounted Police have used a 39 page manual of instruction as their basis for breaking down an individual. The manual advocates the use of brainwashing, sexism, lies, deceit, and deprivation as an assault on his dignity. Imagine a day when you cannot automatically go to the supermarket to buy food. This day is coming. When your freedoms will be so restricted that you and your loved ones may die of starvation and most won't care. But of course, this is not new this is not new neither either. Right now, throughout the world, thousands of children die of starvation every day, but you and I are indifferent to their plight. Why? Perhaps because we're so busy just trying to keep ourselves alive. This indifference will be amplified during the tribulation period. Imagine the scoffers and mockers, okay? Imagine the scoffers of the crowd. So they're starving? It's their own fault. If they would accept the mark, they would live and have the food they need. Instead, it's their choice for them to follow their God. See if their God will send them manna from heaven. If he did it once, let him do it again. Loaded with their bag of groceries, the people will not pity those who refuse to accept the mark. And they won't. They won't. They, just like he just said, they are going to say, hey, if it, why should we pity you? 
Why should we pity you? Let's go to uh hold on, first Peter. But anyways, they're gonna then they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna have any any uh any pity for you. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna be all they, they they're gonna mock and scoff just like they've always been doing. You know? This is the book of Jude, chapter 18, I mean, chapter 1, verse 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You see? And own ungodly lust, that means they're going to walk after this mark. They're going to take this chip and, as he said, loaded their bags loaded with groceries. Okay? They're going to they're gonna willingly take this mark and be casted away. You know, hold on. You know, I'm just going in the spirit. I had a I had a lesson to uh, that I wanted to get up to pull out, but I just go with the, how the spirit leads me, man. All right, because there's a we're living in the time. We're living in the time of the mark of the beast, the RFID chip. They are all of this, everything that you're witnessing right now is all being done just to push the RFID chip on the masses. You see? And, uh, See, look at this right here. Look what it says up here. The message of the 144,000. Okay. <laughs> right after this terrible persecution of the believers, the Most High God seals the 144,000 Jews to protect them from this horrible fate so that they might be able to witness their Messiah to the remaining faithful Gentiles who have turned to Christ and to the still non-believing Jews. What exactly will these 144,000 preach? They will preach the same gospel that Paul and Peter preached, that men are in need of a savior, that Jesus Christ died to remissions of sin to provide eternal life for all who, for all who but believe. These 144 thousand will not be stationed solely in Jerusalem, but will very possibly be in every part of the globe. And apparently they will be as effective as Dwight L. Moody, for after they are given the seal of the Most High, we are told, and after this I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could count. <laughs> Let's get it, man, because this dude he thinks he thinks that now he has meat in there. And I mean he has he has valid points in there where we're talking about the mark of the beast, but he he's wrong because he thinks he thinks uh that all people can be saved. And that's not that's not the case at all. Hold on. Uh, 
All right. So this is Revelation. Chapter 7. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Verse 4, And I have heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand, forty-four, forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel of all the tribes of the children of Israel, of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Naphtali, Naphtalim were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Simeon, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ishakar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. You see, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Verse 11 And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped the power, saying, Amen, blessing, the glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto us. Our God, our God, you see, so the scriptures are saying only these people from these 12 tribes, okay, 12,000 men from each of the 12 tribes, you can't, you can't get it by believing, you have to be of these 12 tribes of Israel, you have to be by blood lineage, your nationality has to go back into Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's not for everybody. Unto our power forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? <laughs> you see? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great, great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You see? Those who came through great tribulation. All right. And the only we know the only ones who are going to make it through the, the, the hour of temptation, through the third world war, through the nuclear fire are the elect. The one hundred and forty four thousand plus one third of women and children. So how can you make your wash your robes and make them white and blood? You see. So. They don't understand the scriptures completely. He doesn't understand the scriptures completely. So he bring out good things, but he also leading many astray. And because he's a so-called Jew, you know, but we know in Revelation, verse 2 and verse 9, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So the Lord used this man, which is of the so-called Jews of today, which are Amalekites, which is the synagogue of Satan, not to be saying anything hate out of hate speech, but according to the Bible, the Amalekites are the Israelites' number one enemy. Specifically, the tribe of Judah is number one enemy. Okay? Uh, 
Let's go to verse three. Uh, I mean, chapter three and verse nine. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jays and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. You see, verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And the hour of temptation is the mark of the beast. It's that RFID chip. That's what the mark of, that's the hour of temptation. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man can take. Verse 12, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in my temple of, of my power, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my power and the name of the city of my power, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my power, and I will write upon him my new name. Okay? He did have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. And unto the angel of the church. All right. But anyways, this is just talking unto the Israelites, not unto all nations. Okay. All right. So this is part two. Yahweh Rath is not as edifying. And I'll pick it up again on another date when I found some good more chat, some good chapters, you know, to go over. Yahweh Rath is not as edifying. Until next time, Shalom.